folks this is Travis of Elston Equine Solutions and today what we're going to talk about is getting vaccines okay uh, more specifically we're going to talk about intermuscular injection sites on a horse uh, when you look in the world of giving medicine to horses or other livestock a lot of times as a horse owner you can give your own shots but you have to check with your local veterinarians, what your state law is. Every region is different, every state's different, so it's up to you to look, go on Google and just put in state laws for uh, for uh, injections of medicine, okay? Uh, a lot of times, as a horse owner, I can give my own medicine and injections intramuscular to my own horses, but if I have a neighbor says, hey, I want to give you a shot, well, you really can't do that because that's the veterinarian rule, so I want to give you caution on that, all right? Uh, a lot of times when I was working back in the feedlots or working different ranches as employee, I could give shots to livestock, uh, cattle, the horses, because on the big program, they have a protocol for veterinarian, veterinarian written up on protocol and a memorandum saying this is the medication that they authorize for this feedlot, for this ranch, and so forth, okay? Right now, I am down at the Clopton Cow Company Ranch, and they have a set protocol where they get the medicine and the vaccines, Coming from a veterinarian, they issued our horses. So today, what we're going to work on is giving dewormers and also shots to all the horses. Okay, which gives me up to the next topic. Each state in each region, you know, like Florida versus where I'm at in Arizona, might have a list of different shots required for each horse, you know, within that region. Okay, same thing with dewormers. If I give a dewormer, each region is totally different. You might only have to do a semi annually twice a month at a different locations. Some uh, locations like Georgia, you might have to give it six times a year for dewormers. So you really have to get with a veterinarian to check what the requirements are for your uh, vaccination program and also dewarming. Okay, so I just want to say that right off the, the shot or off the get go. <laughs> now, I could tell you a funny story. Uh, one time I was training uh, a horse up in. Uh, up in Colorado, and the client was an actual doctor, an MD. Now, I've been there, been MD. And, uh, you know, every state law is different and so forth to give shots. And a lot of times, as an owner like myself, I can give shots. But if I go to a horse show and they want to list required shots, and I write it down because I don't have a DVM there, they're not going to accept it. So, anyhow, getting back to my story. So I was with this horse named Jess, trained it up, and we had to go to this uh, horse event and everything. And the doctor gave all Jess, the horse, all the shots. And he put MD there. And I went to the horse show to turn it in, and they accepted it. Okay? And before I went down there, I asked him, I said, have you ever been turned down? He goes, who's going to argue with the MD? We give shots to humans. And so you got to really use common sense on stuff like that. And on that case, we were fine, you know, but a veterinarian board probably, you know, cause said, oh no, oh no, oh no. But I mean, seriously, who's gonna argue that case, okay? So what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna show two places that are really good for intermuscular injections of a horse, okay? The first one we're gonna talk about is the neck region. Uh, right here, there is the scapula of the horse, okay? And what I'm doing is filling where it's at. So I'm going to draw a line right there with my paint marker. Make sure that you guys can see it. Okay. So that's the back side. Now on top of the neck, there's actually a ligament that runs all the way up here and runs down to the skull of the horse. Okay. If you think of a, a, cane, a crane, okay, a crane operator lifts a lever. And lifts up the load off the pulleys on top of the crane. Okay, that's essentially what this ligament does right here. It holds this big, huge, heavy skull up. Okay, so I don't want to give a shot right here, so I am going to draw a line here. Okay, and you notice it's way below this ligament. Okay, next thing is 
A lot of people think that a horse's vertebrae actually follows this. It doesn't, okay? It's actually down here and kind of S curves up. So I want to make sure I don't hit uh, the skeleton structure of the vertebrae. Uh, so normally what we do, and most people will use, is your hand. So we place a hand right here at the base scapula on top of the ligament. And we draw a line right here to help you out. Okay. Now you'll see my hand is in a safe area to deliver my intermuscular ejection site. Okay. So a rule of thumb is I try to go anywhere between the middle of the finger and my thumb in the area to be able to get my shot. So I hope that helps you out on that site. We're going to demonstrate and actually apply some intermuscular intermuscular shots here Ugh, trying to kick out the word okay the second site that you can give and a lot of people don't like to use it because everybody's scared of what two high feet as the old saying is two eyes are better than two hind feet okay if you can look on the back of this horse right here i've already drew a line okay with my livestock marker right where the intermuscular site would be for an ejection okay uh, a lot of people don't use it because if you inject right here on a horse, which is fine, uh, if you miss it, then all the fluids could possibly go down into the abdomen. And uh, if you miss the good proper site right there, okay, and then you got a lot of swelling down the gut. So once again, a lot of people use the neck more than the hind because they don't want to get kicked by two feet. And if you mess up an uh, injection site, okay, what happens is it starts hardening up and comes into a big, huge golf ball looking... Uh, uh, hemorrhaging right there and it's very hard and it's about the size of a golf ball okay it rips from there and that's when you know you haven't done the ejection correctly all right in the cattle world a lot of times it'll grow into a cyst and then we got to cut up the cyst and then squeeze out all of the gooey uh mucus and just it looks like a, when you squeeze it like toothpaste coming out it's pretty gross okay uh horses really don't do that okay so that's one of the first things I want to explain right there. All right, moving on. We're going to go get the medicine real quick. So we have the vaccines here. We're going to talk about it real quick, what we're using specifically here in this region and so forth. Uh, basically, where you can get this medication, this is a six-way shot. You can see what we're giving. It's right on the label. So we're getting some tetanus, some rhino. And normally the reason they call it six-way because they're combining six different uh, vaccines within this one shot. All right. Uh, what's neat about this company is they got English one side. And if you're El Spano, they have it on the back side. So that's kind of neat. Uh, where you get this different uh, dose of uh, medication or vaccine is you can get, obviously, from a veterinarian. Second place, you can go to a good feed store. Okay, you can go to Tractor Supply. A lot of cases will have these vaccines, uh, Orslands, and so forth. Or you can just go to your mom and pop's feed store, and they'll have these vaccines. But the important thing to know is make sure to get one that has a nice refrigerator that never that is always cold okay because this has to be on a normal cold temperature and you got to make sure the vaccine is not disrupted from being cold okay until you're about ready to administer the vaccine like we are now all right so that's a key point right there all right so no further ado we're gonna go ahead and give this shot okay <music> So the first thing you got to do is you got to clean up the site. You're going to uh, administer the, the shot there, okay? Uh, most of the time what's preferred in the veterinary world and ranch world and everywhere else is just regular alcohol, okay? So all we're going to do is clean out the uh, any dirt might be on the hair follicles there. And remember, a horse has hair. They don't have fur. So we're just going to pat it down here. I'm going to give the shot. I'm just using a clean rag here. You can use cotton swab, you can use a piece of cotton, 
whatever or a clean rag in case i'm doing so i am good to go there clean it off next stage what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to minister the shot So once again, you can place your hand up there. I'm not gonna touch it because I cleaned it. And right between the middle finger is, that's what I'm shooting for. When I do it, I'm gonna go straight in at a 90 degree angle. Okay, I'm not gonna go straight down here, not down there, anything like that. Now, a lot of people, what they do is they'll tap the spot they're gonna give to keep the horse occupied. A lot of your other horses get used to that tap, tap, tap. They're like, ooh, something sharp's coming up next. Okay, and pretty soon you'll see that doesn't really work. So another technique, if you don't not use the tap 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 method is you could just squeeze the fold and pinch it and that's right where you get the shot okay and that's what we're going to do today so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to cut remove the the needle the needle in this case and if you don't have it coming uh, as a package a good thing for horses is an inch and a half and a 20 gauge okay needle and you get that from your local store now once again just as a quick reminder make sure that you get with the veterinarian to know which vaccines to get for your region okay so i'm going to go ahead and take my needle off put it in my pocket here make sure i don't hurt myself here okay what i'm going to do is i am going to pinch and all i'm going to do is uh, just a quick dab right where it's pinched at go right in straight okay now what i'm going to do is call a back flush i'm going to pull back on the plunger and look for any blood okay Notice I'm pulling back, there ain't no blood, which means I'm straightening the muscle. And if I did hit blood, I want to make sure I move it because I hit some type of vein, okay, and go for a different location. Now I'm just going to slowly push in. The nice thing about this pre one, there's no uh, air bubbles in there like you're withdrawing from a normal, normal bottle, okay, full of the vaccine. So now I know this one's done. I'm just going to put the cap back on. Okay, and voila, you seen I ministered all of that vaccine. Okay, easy pleasy. Easier making flapjacks. Okay, we removed it. Now I'm just going to rub, clean it off because once again, I have alcohol in here and real easy, good to go. Okay. Now remember, this was intramuscular injection. So I pinched it, so I want to make sure that you're not confused that I was doing something else. Savvy? Here we go. Hello, folks. Uh, once again, I'm going to talk about is uh, if a horse, I talked about before, if you tap, 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 and then do your shot, a lot of times horses get real wise to that. They know it's tap, 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 and then uh, the shot's coming next. What I like about the pinch method is when a horse is dehydrated, a lot of tests what you'll do, especially on the desert, is you'll pinch the skin and release it. And you can see how fast I pinch it and it laid back flat. It was within the two second time period. That means this horse is pretty hydrated. So if you're doing that constantly, the horse doesn't think nothing about it. So that's not a reason why I like to do it. The pinch method of giving a shot to a horse, and we're going to administer that right now. This horse is Colonel. Once again, I got my scapula here. Put my hand up there. I find the spot I like. And I just kind of clean it up. Take my shot here. Untie the horse. A lot of times, if you have, this is a one man operation right here, one woman. Okay. I'm going to pinch. Going 90 degrees. Draw, see if there's any blood because it's intermuscular, nothing. Go ahead and give the shot. Come back out, pull it out, put my cap back on before I do anything, and I get to go. So, that's another reason what I like about doing the pinch method. Okay, they get used to you checking to see if they're hydrated or not. So, that's a quick tip for you, too. All right, folks, so now we're gonna demonstrate is how we get a shot back here in the, the back hind quarters. You've already seen that I've already cleaned it off with uh, rubbing alcohol. You'll know, go ahead and clean up the hair follicles, follicles and so forth. I'm gonna stand off the side. She's got, our, she's got a horse fly flying around. Hopefully it doesn't agitate her too much, so we'll try to be fast about it. Once again, you're just gonna be a 90 degree angle. Going 
right into the butt. Just like this, and we're just gonna pull back, make sure there's no blood. Now, when you're giving in the vein and giving different medication, you will look for blood to come in, but this is not the case, because once again, this is intermuscular injection. I just placed it, pull it back out real quick, and I'm good to go, okay? Now I can grab my rag, and I'm gonna rub the spot real quick. There's two different ways of doing that. You can rub it when it's done, or you can pull it out and then place the rag on when pulling out and rub, okay? And that's a pretty good method to doing this too, all right? And all you're doing is spreading out that big uh, lump where the ejection site was. So you see there wasn't no kicking, there was no nothing. And once again, if you desensitize your horse good enough, you can stand back here. She never changed her posture with her hind leg. It's easy pleasy. We're going to talk about these needles. What do you do with these once it's done, okay? A lot of times what I'll do is just put the cap back on and I'll put it back in the packaging and put it inside the bag so we do proper disposal of the needles, okay? You could drop it off anywhere, veterinary clinic or a medical facility, just drop the needles right into it. Uh, some people just throw them in the trash, uh, you know, and that's one way of doing it. It's probably not the most proper way, okay, but that's what you do with these needles. Always keep accountability of these. You don't want yourself uh, getting poked by them. I've been in feedlots when you accidentally did, did that, okay. Uh, I've been to different places where you accidentally step on these, or a horse steps on them, it's just bad juju. Don't do it, please. As soon as you get the, the needle and you're done with it, go put it away as soon as you can before you forget. There you go. All right, folks, so we're going to talk about a little bit of safety. If you got uh, two people that are actually, uh, you'll see this a lot, veterinarians and so forth, so you always have assistant up by the head. There's a safe way to do it, though. If I am working on anything on this horse's body right here, the proper position is not being directly in front of the horse. The horse spooks, what it's going to do is run right into your assistant, okay? Uh, so you never stand right in front of the horse. So right at a 45 degree angle, Okay, from the shoulder right here is the safest pocket, all right? And just like my assistant's doing right now, you want to stand on the same side as the horse, okay? This is, and we're going to discuss why. If my handler, while I'm administering whatever I'm doing to my horse, okay, and the horse freaks out, it's not going to run into the assistant, not going to run into me because I have an open door right back here on the other side for the horse to squeeze through, okay? Either front or off to the left. If the handler is standing on the other side of the horse's head, okay, like this, the horse has nowhere to go. It can't really go that way because you close the door and you close the door here, okay? So the only option it has is either going straight, okay? But if you go straight, the handler's got the head. Guess what's going to happen? The horse knows, turns that direction. Guess where the hindquarters are going? The hindquarters are going to go right into to me, the veterinarian, or just a simple cowboy just administering a uh, vaccine dewormer or whatever, okay? So the important thing to capture on this is if you're helping and you're next to the horse said, always be on the same side as the person administering the vaccination dewormers or horseshoeing for fair or whatever, okay? So I guess I just wanted to point that out for safety, okay? So you're always at that nice 45 degree angle because it's hard for them to kick hard for them to charge into you and so forth. So what we're going to do now is we're going to clean up the site for the vaccine. Clean the dirt off the hair follicle. I'm going to grab my shot. I'm in 90 degree angle. Reverse plunge, make sure I don't hit a vein, it's good. Go ahead and push it in there. Easy pleasy. Legs over there. And I got my cap back on the needle, and that's just how easy it is. Hello folks, this is a uh... Another horse here, this is Jamie. Jamie's a retired mare. She had an injury to her eyeball. For those of you that are very detailed watching my videos, which I appreciate, uh, it's retired because the horses, or uh, sorry, the veterinarians couldn't uh, save the eyeball. Okay, so we're gonna give the shot again. 
I already cleaned the side ejection side runs there's the shoulder put my hand there you'll see it's right in the spot where my middle finger is it's in safe location and, uh, for safety put my cap back on almost got ahead of myself untie the horse from the trailer because I don't want it to sit back get scared or whatever and going nine degrees pull back no blood pushing all the way in Got my clean rag, pulled out, and rub the spot. Easy pleasy. Put the cap back on, and we're done with that shot of the six way. Okay. Hello, folks. This is Blue. Blue's a, a mounted police officer horse. Uh, obviously, he just came in from the pasture. Been a couple years, he's been used that purpose, but you see, he's bigger than most elk. Okay, he's, he's a big boy. He's used to breaking in crowds, uh, going in Mardi Gras down in Alabama and so forth. Uh, he's a heck of a trooper, I tell you that. So we're going to head, uh, he's kind of retired, getting up there in age, and uh, we're just going to take care of him. Okay, my alcohol towel there. You see there's no reaction from this horse. All right, folks, this is uh, Blaze. He's, uh, believe it or not, a Missouri Foxtrotter that I've had for years, a great circle horse. He's kind of retired. And we've ridden a long time for many years, gone when I was down in Missouri, working down that way. And uh, just a great circle horse because he's a Missouri Foxtrotter. If you have back injuries or anything else, I tell you what, these horses are comfortable because they're gated which means every one foot's always on the ground no matter what gate they're in, okay? Uh, very, very comfortable horse. And I've ridden this horse in feed yards and so forth, and uh, he's earned that respect. I don't believe on uh, getting rid of a horse just because of their age. At that time, I didn't do the, the whole pinch test thing. Okay, because he's used to giving shots. And I've never felt that I really need to. So once again, it's personal judgment on uh, whether or not you pinch or you just put it in there. And he's so old, he doesn't really care. Okay, and that's why I made the decision in that case not to pinch the skin. Okay. All right, folks, we're two thirds of the way through the cavy or some parts, some parts of the country known as Bermuda. And so we're going ahead. Uh, this is you've seen in videos before. This is my my colt. He hasn't been gelded or anything. Quarter horse got up in Kansas and so forth. Uh, a good friend of mine that you've seen in videos before. And his name is Poncho, if you do remember correctly. He was born on Cinco de Mayo. Henceforth the name. So once again, we're cleaning all the dirt off the hair particles down there deep in hairline there Get my shot ready okay I'm gonna pinch here 49 degrees draw it up nothing happens push it all the way in draw it out put my lid back on only got so many arms if I had an assistant or whatever holding, obviously I'd have my towel up there and draw it out at the same time as I was drawing the needle. Clean it off. Good boy. Hello, folks. This is the uh, next one in the order of seasonal shots and deworming. This is Scribbles. And if you notice on the front of the horse's face there, it's got a raised lump there. And this horse comes from a different owner. It got dropped off for a little bit of training. And a little bit of care and what happened is somebody swerved in front of a truck and trailer the driver and operator of the pickup truck had slam on the brakes because you know how crazy drivers are they don't look out for people with hauling horses and so forth at any rate the horse went forward and uh the horse's nose went right through the front window of the horse trailer okay some of you've seen those circular windows before well that's what happened this horse got cut up so what we're going to do here prior to the week, we're going to get taken down to vet, and we're going to have that removed right there. So that's kind of the backstory of this horse, old scribbles. So I'm going to come up here, I'm going to clean off my magical area. OK, 
Okay, you see the shoulder blade there, put my hand, I'm riding that good spot, middle finger, boom, right there's what I'm aiming for. Okay, sometimes what I like to do is just take the lead rope if I'm by myself, having to do this without a helper, I'll just kind of do it like Makati. I'll just put my rope right there so I got both hands free and I can still have a lot of control with the horse. Am I doing this one, dude? Pinch. Nine degrees in, back flash, nothing there because it's intramuscular. Inject it in, put my towel with it. Come on, rub it in place, put a needle cap on for the horse jumps into me. And that's all there is to that one. All right, folks, if you remember back in the past with a video named uh, Honey Hands, this was our demonstration horse. This is old hitch. So what I'm doing is looking for that shoulder blade, put my hand up there, find the spot I want, clean it off. Rub, rub, rub. Okay, so I'm just putting this on here. You can use a rag or you can just squirt it on like I just did. I'm going to shorten up my rope. <coughs> Get my hand up there like the same. Block his head. And I'm just going to pinch the area I want. Good. Good. Pinch going 90 degrees. Push in. Draw it back. So blood. Good. Intermascular. And that's all there is to it. And go ahead and grab my Else. There we go. Yeah, so we're cleaning out the end debris. It might have went into that shot area. And we're good to go on that. Now we're